as always, y'all have some great questions, so let's dive right in because it's very hot and I might melt. Longhorn Dale asks, how do you see all three running backs, John, Deontay Foreman, Chris Warren, and Kirk Johnson being used, and what kind of numbers do you think all three can or will produce? Foreman and Warren are getting the most attention, obviously, but Johnson has been actually pretty good in camp. I've been seeing clips of him, you know, pictures, all of that, and he's looking pretty good. My issue with using all three, I've, I've kind of accepted the fact that Foreman and Warren are kind of going to do like a little duo type of deal, probably that both of them are going to be in there at the same time. But when three comes in, the, you know, three's a crowd, right? That's what they say, three's a crowd. So I don't know if how this is going to work out because on the one hand, yeah, he's talented and you want him in there, but you got to let these other guys get into a rhythm. And if you're swapping these running backs out every three seconds or every three plays or whatever it is, they're never going to get into a rhythm. And that's what comes into play when there's three of them. When there's two, it's more manageable. That's how a lot of teams deal with two running backs. But three, we're getting a little, we're getting into a stinky situation there. So I don't know how it's going to work out. I think all of them can put up big numbers, but I, I would way rather have consistent two there going in than get all messy with three. Akila210 asks, do you feel the Olympic teams for basketball, both men and women, should use different players each time out? Not necessarily. I know there's the whole issue that there's just not a lot of competition in these basketball games, but that's because U.S. has the best basketball players in the world. You can't do anything about it. As far as swapping them out each time out, same thing that I was kind of just talking about. You can't let a guy get into a rhythm or a girl get into a rhythm if they're coming out every time out or whatever it is. Yes, you want to see these other guys play more, but maybe you've split up by halves. I don't know. It's it, We've talked about this. It's really not fair how good the U.S. is, but not our fault that we have the NBA and other team countries don't but you gotta let these players get into a rhythm that's just it, that's what it comes down to and if you keep on swapping people out after every time out no one's gonna be able to get into that no one's gonna be able to get comfortable and start to feel their game so you really can't do it every time out I would say every quarter maybe at least I think every half would be better but quarter would work too Robert G. Kemp asks, with football season on the horizon, everyone forgets that basketball is rooting, rebooting soon after. We need a briefing on what to look for from the 2016 hoops teams. Uh, for the men, you should be excited. These guys are really excited. They are hyped. They are ready for the season. They've all been working really hard, and they look good. I mean, these, these players look good. It's going to be a very different Texas men's basketball team. Very different. We're not going to see the people that have been on this team for the past four years, so it's going to be a little weird. Uh, I think Shaka made some huge strides last season with the team and developing some of these players that had been here, and I think it's just going to continue next season. I'm really excited for the basketball season. I hope y'all are too. For the women, same thing. I mean, last season was a really great season. Karen Aston has just been getting better and better each year. I think everyone should be excited for the people that she has coming in and everything that's going to be able to happen on her side. I think the women's team is going to be really good. It's just going to come down to that pesky little UConn team, isn't it? It always is. LeBeau asks, I've been hearing a lot about Okafor. Do you think he pu pushes to play this season on the offensive line? Y'all know how I feel about the offensive line. You know how I feel about how crucial it is for a good offensive line. And last season, no one on the offensive line seemed to really earn their spot to me. I don't think that going into this season, anyone has a secure spot on that offensive line. Who last year impressed you on the offensive line? I'll wait. Exactly. If you want to, if Charlie thinks that one of these freshmen, if Okafor, if anybody is good enough to play on the line, start the first game, go ahead. I'm for it because nobody has earned their spot so far in my mind. So I'm for it. Play him. Why not? LeBeau also asked, after McNeil's suspension, do you think he has a future at UT? For those of you who didn't hear, uh, DeAndre McNeil, the receiver who is now going to be a sophomore, was suspended indefinitely last week and went home and no one really knows what's going on. I'm not going to talk about the rumors and what's going around, but anybody who gets it sent home right before, what was it, two days before camp starts, that is serious enough that I don't think that they're going to be returning to Texas. I don't, I don't see him having a future here. That's just me. I think if Charlie is going to send someone home, that means something, and I think what it means is they're not coming back. Slimmy BKT asks, should the IOC have suspended all Russian athletes since they found that it was state-sanctioned and implemented doping? The, the Russia drama seems to be the story of this Olympics, and I don't really know how I feel about it. On um, you know, I think yes, they all should have been suspended because I'm trying to picture if it was any other country. You know, what would have happened if it was the U.S. who had done this? First of all, that would have been 
World War III, everyone would have lost their minds if the U.S. had done this. But I think that, you know, if it was a smaller country, they would have been out of the running. Like, no, I mean, the whole country would have been suspended. So I think, yes, the whole, every Russian athlete should have been suspended. It should have been just this unanimous decision. It, this is a tricky situation. I really don't know. I don't know what, how this could have been handled better, but I'm pretty sure any other way of handling would have been better than this one. It's just, by having some athletes compete from Russia, and not all of them, you're having this kind of like discredited situation. So for example, let's say if a Russian athlete does win some major event, let's just say, let's say they win gymnastics, Russia wins gymnastics. Everyone is gonna say, oh, but maybe they just won because they were doping. And they'll be discredited even if those athletes did not dope. You know what I'm saying? So it's just become this sticky situation. I think it would have been better if everyone had just not been able to compete from Russia. LeBeau also asked, how do you like Gerard Hurd at receiver or in multiple roles? I love it, honestly. I think I've said this before that I wanted Gerard to be like a return guy and receiver. I think he's so athletic and putting him in quarterback is just not right. Y'all all got on me when I said him and Tyrone are not quarterbacks. You thought I was mean. Well, I still stand by it. They're not quarterbacks. And I think Gerard Hurd is an incredible athlete and he should be used to that ability. Put him wherever he thinks he can go, wherever Texas needs help, put him there. I mean, why not? Tex Cuerno Largo asks, where is Tim Cole on the depth chart? He's not starting, I can tell you that much. Uh, Linebacker is a very loaded position. He might be second string, might be third string. There's just a lot of guys there. So I don't know how it's going to work. I guess it also depends how the defense sides line up. You know, I, <laughs> there's a lot of linebackers. I mean, listen to all the guys who play linebacker. Malik Jefferson, Nashawn Hughes, Brecklin Hager, Anthony Wheeler, DeMarco Boyd, Edwin Freeman, Jeffrey McCulloch, Malcolm Roach, Eric Fowler, and then Tim Cole. So it's just, there's a lot of guys at that position. You know, and that's that's not even all of them. That's just some of them. So it's it's loaded. It's too loaded. I don't know. Third, second string, best case scenario, second string. I think. Kay Friedman asked, "What does Coach Gilbert say about how he envisions using Kyle Loxley? What is Kyle Loxley working on to get better and improve his opportunities?" I'd be lying if I said I've heard anything about Kyle Loxley so far. I don't. This whole situation is weird. I've never seen this guy play, so I don't know if he's good or he could suck. I don't know. I said how I want Gerard moves to receiver, and I want Tyron Swift's move to tight end. So I think it could be Shane Bouchel and Kyle Loxley back there. But again, I've never seen Kyle Loxley play, so I don't know if he's even good. Do I even want him playing quarterback? I'm kind of surprised he's still even here. I thought he would have transferred by now because he is getting no attention, especially with Gerard making this move. That's all everyone's talking about, and I haven't heard a word about Kyle Loxley. Not one word. T Rune 744 asks, how many linebackers will the coaches take in – next class in this next class three or four it does it depend on what guys like Moses and Browning do like I already just said linebacker might be the deepest position on this team if aside from the two seniors which is Tim Cole and Johnny Sang who's a walk-on there's 11 guys coming back who could be coming back at linebacker assuming no one goes pro or anything like or transfers 11 guys so I, I mean pick up more people if you want I just it seems like a crowded locker room I don't think Texas needs to get another linebacker for like two years, maybe. 11 guys, that's ridiculous. 11. LeBeau asks, if you could pick a city that currently does not have an NFL team and has never had one, which city would you select? And what team would you move there? This is hard. Like, I kind of wanted to say some like deserted city, like in the middle of nowhere, so then people wouldn't get in trouble. But like Baylor has showed me, even in a town like that, like Waco, you can still get in trouble. So there's no solution because these guys just can't behave. Um, part of me thinks that some of those places that have two teams maybe could lose one, maybe like New York, move the Jets somewhere, or some maybe in Florida. Like, I don't think that there needs to be three teams in Florida. That's just me. I don't know where they'd move them to. First city that came to mind was San Antonio, and I think the only reason that came to mind is because they have an NBA team and a non-NFL team, and the two other cities that have NBA teams in Texas also have an NFL team. Maybe that's why I thought that. I don't really want San Antonio again NFL team because the fans are going to annoy me. Another place could be Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, I guess. Uh, people in Oklahoma have nothing else to do. They really like the Thunder, so give them something else to do. But again, we're going to have to deal with annoying Oklahoma fans. So it's just, it, I don't know. It's a hard question.
I don't know. I would. Ha I, I think I'd have to say those two cities, though. Last question is from Rock Springs. Jillian, what are people saying about this year's Longhorn football team, people close to the program and on campus? The vibe around this team and on campus and everything is like very hype. Like everyone's excited, ready for this season. This is gonna be like about redemption, revenge, all that. I'm taking that with a grain of salt because that's how the guys were acting last year. And then they went and started the season against Notre Dame and got their butts kicked. So I, I remember watching that game. I was so confused as to how they spent the entire sum, summer talking about how they're putting in this work, going hard, X, Y, Z, and then they came out playing like that. So this could easily just be a repeat of last year, or it can be completely different. All I know is there's a lot of energy right now in the football program. Everyone seems to be hype about it, excited. I don't know how I feel yet. I don't know if I'm buying into it. I, I got to see something first. It, I can't go off of hype. That's just not me. All right, guys, as always, great questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go watch the Olympics. Enjoy your weekend. Stay inside if you're in Texas because it is just ridiculously hot. And I will see you next week.